Alright, so this is my uh, Jund combo deck, and it's kind of combo deck, it's mostly just as much synergy packed into a deck as possible. Um, and this is playable in the new um, Battle for Zendikar standard, so um, nothing rotates except the uh, lands, you know, using the... Uh, Using the temples for now, but obviously those are going to get replaced with uh, either the new um, two basic lands, which are pretty good, or um, something else. I don't know. We'll see. But everything as far as cards uh, rotates, so that's good. Or doesn't rotate. Um, so the way this deck works is uh, you basically get lots of values out of lots of value out of your um, entering and leaving effects so um, for instance the one of the main cards in this deck is the merciless executioner slash fleshbag marauder um, this pretty much is your removal except for the um, ultimate prices uh, which are going to get uh, changed out for the new Ruinous Path because it deals with Planeswalkers. I didn't really want to buy a Hero's Downfall right now, so... Um, so that's going to get changed out. So, the way it works is you have these enter, or really anything in the... any creature in the deck enter, um, and you get multiple triggers off of Flame Shadow Conjuring, so you can... Um, pay three for the Executioner, and then pay another red, and copy it, and then you each sack two creatures. So, um, you b basically get rid of two of their creatures for four, and um, a lot of times sac sacrificing your creatures is not a big deal, or is beneficial. So, um, for instance, Sulta Emissary is what you want to be sacking the most. It says when it dies, you manifest the top card of your library. And um, manifesting is also a pretty important part of this deck because um, there's lots of interesting things that can go on with manifesting. Um, for instance, you can flip it in response to manifesting and then trigger Flame Shadow Conjuring, making a copy of whatever you flipped. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, whenever anything leaves the battlefield with outpost siege, you deal one damage. So uh, it's there's there's a lot of combos in this deck to explain. So um, let's just start with each card, and then it'll make a little bit more sense. So two elemental bonds. So this triggers off of any of our. Um, creatures with three or more power, and um, any copies of them also. So we got uh, Whisperwood Elemental, we have Brutal Horde Chief, all the Merciless Executioners trigger it, the Gravecaller triggers it, and the Flame Rush Rider triggers it, and then any other copies of those also triggers it. So um, you get a lot of card advantage off of it, which is cool. Um, so that's the main reason that's in the deck. Um, Outpost Siege, I kind of already explained, but um, whatever anything leaves the battlefield, including any of the tokens from the Flame Shadow Conjuring or the tokens from the Flame Rush Rider, leave. It deals one damage. Um, you can do a lot of really funny things with uh, this and Evolutionary Leap at instant speed. Seeming like sacrifice the Soul Time, sorry, once, deal one damage. Sacrifice the Manifest again deal another damage, and then you get two creatures into your hand. So there's some pretty cool stuff that goes on with that. Plus you can just play it for the card advantage, which is very helpful against slower decks. Um, it's kind of another card advantage card besides Elemental Bond and Evolutionary Leap. So Evolutionary Leap. Um, Evolutionary Leap is another kind of key card in this deck. But as you notice, everything is like two of, so we don't want too many of anything, really. Um, but Evolutionary Leap will 
sacrifice your uh, manifests and in response to chunk blocking um, it'll get rid of your Sultai emissaries give you a manifest just keep hitting creatures because there's like tons of creatures in this deck so it's pretty cool you can flip a Liliana at instant speed if they try and kill it um, lots of cool things you can even um, play that turn two and then um, a little while later just play a merciless executioner and while the triggers on the stack you sacrifice it and then um, they still have to sacrifice a creature but if you have nothing on board then you still get a creature out of it so that's cool so um, flame shadow conjuring again makes copies of everything um, including manifests so like for instance the whispered elemental comes into play triggers then at the end step you get two two twos instead of just one and then the two two also triggers the flame shadow conjuring you can make a copy of it and then that'll stick around for the next turn so it's lots of crazy stuff um, <clears throat> you can copy the horde chiefs so the horde chief uh, whenever something attacks you gain one life for each attacking creature and they lose one life for each attacking creature so you can just have a huge amount of damage with uh, just by copying those um, you can also copy the gray colors, so you can get uh, four two twos out of it instead of just two. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you can even copy Liliana herself, um, and because of the legendary rule, the copy sacrifices and then triggers this immediately. So that's kind of cool too, and you get a creature the two two. Um, Flame Rush Rider is one of my favorite. You uh, dash it out, make a copy, attack with both. And the copies, the copy, copies the uh, original. The original copies the copy, and then you attack for twelve just with that. So it's five mana for twelve damage. It's pretty insane. Um, and then Sultai emissaries you can copy and then sacrifice with evolutionary leap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just lots of different things going on. Um, so, Whisperwood Elemental. Uh, I actually have an Arc Fiend of Depravity in here because I don't have another Whisperwood Elemental. But um, Whisperwood Elemental uh, is, again, card advantage, pretty much. I mean, you got lots of creatures in the deck, so that if you hit one, um, there's a lot of them that are pretty good uh, to flip over, so that's cool. There's some really funny uh, um, combat tricks with the Ruthless Rippers. You can um, reveal a black card and flip it over and then it's a death touch 1-1 one, one, so it's kind of like a combat trick that's uh, pretty funny because they won't expect it and it's going to deal 2 damage to them so it's really not a bad card um, and then uh, yeah um, that and the flame shadow conjuring again um, <clears throat> the uh, death blade marauders or Grave Blade Marauders. Um, since we have so many creatures, this thing does a lot of damage when it hits them, and it's a very good blocker in the early game, so that, that's pretty much why it's in here. Um, it's going to be replaced with the new uh, Battle for Zendikar card, the, uh, the black-green one. that When it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 one, one spawn into play, and then uh, whenever a creature dies on your field, you get to scry one, so it's going to kind of synergize with this deck better, but for now, this guy's pretty solid, just not as fun as I would like. Um, I already explained the Ruthless Rippers, Brutal Horde Chiefs. Um, these guys are going to be your main source of life gain, which is important against a lot of decks. Um, it also prevents board stalls because of the other ability, the one that um, makes them block what you want. Basically, you just get to make them block how you want them to block. Which can be pretty funny, especially with the um, flame shadow conjuring triggers and stuff. You can just like make them block that, and um, even though the thing's going to be sacrificed, so that's pretty funny. Alright, explain the with the uh, flashback marauders, the grave colors are another one where you know you want to 
trigger them with Flame Shadow Conjuring or, or Flame Rush Rider, copy them, get more tokens, more tokens, more tokens, and then, uh, yeah, it's just good. And uh, sacrifices the Sultai Emissary, which is the cannon fodder. Uh, Liliana, uh, you can do some really funny things with this for right now. It's, again, it's it's in the deck instead of the um, the other the black green guy from Battle from Zendikar. Battle from Zendikar. Uh, but she's pretty funny too right now because you can play a Fleshback Marauder, um, show flip and get a 2-2, then you minus her for 3, get the Fleshbag Marauder back, sacrifice the 2-2, and so it's like a it's like a double Fleshbag Marauder. Or you can just plus her until she ults. Um, she's done work, she's pretty good. Flame Rush Rider is another key, like, combo-y piece to it. Um, not quite as good as the uh, Flame Shadow Conjuring, but uh, it's faster. It's going to do stuff quicker, so that's why I have two of these, two of the other ones. Uh, these ones, you can get a lot of damage in pretty quickly, or you can just pl you know play them and then attack next turn and just walk down their board with a, if you have an um, executioner out, just keep copying that, copying that, and then whatever creatures they play just keep dying, so it's pretty funny. It's just a board lock. And then Sultai Emissary is actually extremely good. And you wouldn't think so, but um, it's extremely good against aggro. And the reason is you play it, and then in order to get around it, they're going to have to kill it twice. And um, both blockers, a 1 1 and a 2 2, are pretty relevant against aggro. Um, and it's great for sacrificing against all these things. So. Um, yeah, that's why I have four of them in here. I think that's the only thing I have four besides the uh, Marauders. So that's kind of how the deck works. It's just a lot of, lots of entering, sacrificing, um, lots and lots of triggers, and uh, shenanigans. So that's it's really fun, and um, it's done pretty well actually. It's uh, it's pretty strong against aggro because you've got all the early turn blockers like these. Um, you have the executioners, which are going to constantly get rid of their board. Um, my favorite play is, you know, turn two emissary, um, turn three executioner. That's like, you know, that's a very strong start. Um, and you get like lots of blockers from with these guys. Um, just a lot of like stuff to block and get around, which is good. Um, Against mid-range, it's also pretty good because, again, you just make them sacrifice a bunch of creatures. Um, once your combo gets going, it's, nothing on their board is ever going to stick. So, um, you know, it, their deck is mostly based around creatures. So it's, you know, it's pretty easy to deal with. Um, and another good thing about playing against mid-range is they will um, have a lot of spot removal, but most likely you already got your value out of whatever you played, you know, uh, so you played a, a Rakshasa Gravecaller, what are they going to do about it? They're going to kill it in response, it's still going to trigger and give you the 2-2s, two -two, so, uh, there's, I mean, lots of stuff is very resilient against removal because of that, um, and then just the amount of guys is pretty crazy, and Evolutionary Leap is just going to keep you from ever not getting value out of something, so. And then, uh, control. Uh, the reason it's good against control is because you have very uh, high amounts of card advantage. You have uh, elemental bond. Whenever something enters, you get to draw a card. Um, output siege, you can just do the um, cons so that you just keep, keep getting cards every turn. And it's just, you know, they're going to have a really hard time um, because, you know, their, their threats are, um, Ojutai, which just dies to a Merciless Executioner, which, I mean, if you're playing Control, most likely you're going to have them in your hand anyways, because, um, you're not going to be playing them. Uh, so, I mean, it's very hard for them to win against this deck, actually. It's probably, that's probably the best matchup for this deck. Um, 
So let's look at the uh, sideboard. And I was I would say the worst match matchup for this deck is Ramp because it doesn't have um, too much like direct kill, uh, so it's kind of difficult to um, disrupt their early turns or when they have um, when they have a lot of mana dorks out and then they play their large guy, the um, the merciless executioners and the flashback routers they don't really do anything because they just sacrifice their little guys and then keep making more of the Xenagos and everything so it's a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah ramp is probably the worst matchup for this deck. So there's a few things on the sideboard to deal with some stuff so um, for right now I have two dictative Erebuses in here which is pretty hilarious. I mean this deck is made to make a lot of different cre like a lot of creatures, just tons of creatures, just swarm the board constantly. And um, the way you deal with ramp is you will flash this in, and uh, when things die, they just it wipes their whole board, and the, the, you know it's over. <laughs> so that's really good. Um, obviously, it's, it's going to rotate out, but you know. It's a cool sideboard for right now. Uh, Archfiend of Depravity. Uh, this card is also very good against a ramp because it makes them sacrifice everything but two creatures. So most likely you can, um, if once they sacrifice two creatures, then on your turn you can just copy a Flashback Marauder or whatever you do, and then, you know, it really uh, just wipes their board pretty much. So there's this one, and then there's one in my deck, but, you know. Uh, Gaze Revenge, again, uh, just kind of in here, but it's pretty good against control. Um, not that we really need a sideboard against control, but it's pretty good in the first place, so, you know, it's very hard to deal with. Uh, Mardu Scouts, also against control, so it's very quick. Um, triggers your elemental bonds over and over and over again, so it gets you card advantage really quick. That's why this is in here, too, another elemental bond. So that's against control. You got two Whip of Erebuses. These are very good against aggro and burn. Um, again, these are going to rotate out, but um, for right now, they're really good. And they, you know, they synergize with the rest of the deck too, pretty well, too. Uh, and then you got four Twin Bolts and an Arc Lightning. So that's, these are also very good against ramp because um, they're going to have a lot of little dudes that ramp, like, um, Elvish Mystic and um, the uh, the guy that produces red, green, blue. I can't remember what his name is. But um, Twin Bolts, I mean, you can just turn to disrupt their mana, and then a lot of the times they just can't do anything after that, so um, it's very good. Uh, one thing this deck has trouble with is Planeswalkers, too. Uh, Planeswalkers are very annoying <laughs> because this deck tends to stall the board a lot and um, if they have a planeswalker they are going to gain that advantage very quickly so um, one of the things that's going to go in here after after rotation is the ruinous path just to get rid of those um, planeswalkers and possibly maybe maybe some um, like haste creatures to hit their planeswalkers with or something but yeah, that is the deck. Um, it's extremely fun to play. Oh, and 27 lands. I forgot to mention how many lands there were, but 27. Um, yeah, that's the deck. It's really, really fun to play. Uh, you, you realize more combos every time you play it, um, just because of how many triggers there are and how many interactions there are. So um, it's really fun. Hope you enjoyed.